Hello, everybody. We're on uh, day three of Absolute Value Notes. Um, we have a one page front and back, or two pages if you look at it as that. Um, on the notes, you should have the worksheet in front of you. Um, and I'm going to walk you guys through this, and then you have a worksheet to work on afterwards, worksheet 6.3. Um, here we go. I'm going to minimize myself over here so you can just focus on the lecture. All right, so and explain one. We have the vertex of an absolute value graph is an ordered pair, H, K. And once you identify the vertex, you can then write an equation for the graph using the form Y equals A times the absolute value, uh, absolute value of X minus H plus K. We've already talked about this yesterday, how you could use these two values um, to find your vertex. We just didn't label them H and K. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at your graph here and you're going to find your vertex. Here, our vertex is at negative 2, 2, right there. So we're going to identify that vertex at negative 2, 2, and we're going to use that vertex to help us write an equation for the absolute value graph using that formula, just like we said. So first thing we do is we're going to write y equals, I'm going to come back to a in just a second. I'm going to plug in um, my vertex. First, I'm going to leave a little bit of space for an a value if I need it. So I'll write x. Now I have my x value of my vertex is negative 2. So I have x minus negative 2 which is really x plus 2. And if you want to see that kind of worked out, I'll do that for you up here. You have x minus a negative 2, which simplifies to x plus 2. And then we're going to have our k value, which is the y value of our vertex. So we're going to write plus 2 because there is a positive 2. Now to figure out our a value, we talked yesterday how the a value is basically just our slope, what we're doing from our vertex to our next points. So from our vertex to our next point, we go up one and to the right one, or up one and to the left one. So that means it is going to just be one here, but we're not going to write one. We're just going to leave it blank. So our final answer will be y equals absolute value of x plus 2 plus 2. All right, now we're on to part B. Part B, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to identify that vertex. So our vertex over here is at 1, 2, 3, negative 2. So we're going to write our vertex as positive 3, negative 2. And then we are going to plug it in. So we are going to do y equals, we'll leave a little space just in case we have an a value that's not 1. We have x minus 3 because we had a positive 3. So when we plug that in for our h value, it stays negative. And then our k value is negative 2. So that's going to plug in right there. Then. Hopefully you notice that our absolute value is opening downward. So that means we have a rocks. So we are going to have a negative a value. I'm going to put my negative sign right there. And then we're going to see what we do from the vertex. We go down one and to the right one and down one to the left one. So that is just one over one, which is a negative one. Again, you don't have to write the one. So when you rewrite your answer, you're going to write y equals the negative absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. So we've accounted for x value of our vertex, y value of our vertex, and the rocks. And our a value was just 1 because we went down 1 and over. All right, moving on to part C. We're going to again identify the vertex. So we went from the origin over 1 up 3. To the, over to the right one and up three. So we're at positive one, 
positive three for our vertex. We're gonna do the same thing. Y equals, leave a little space, absolute value of X minus one, because it's a positive one, plus three, because we went up three. And now we're gonna see, ooh, this looks like it might be a, a vertical compression. Let's find out. So to get to our next point, which is right there, we went down one and to the right two. So we know that our A value is one half because it's our change in Y over our changes that change in X. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, I hope he doesn't forget that it's a rock. Don't worry, I didn't forget. So you're gonna put a negative in front. And there's nothing to simplify. So your final answer, y equals negative one half times the absolute value of x minus one and then plus three. At any point I'm going too fast, you can just pause it and rewind it and rewatch it again. Okay, part D. Again, identify that vertex. We went to the left one, down one, two, three, four. So left one is negative one, down four, negative four. So that's our important part. That's where we get started. I'm gonna leave a blank spot for the A. Some of you might be like, oh, I'm just gonna go figure what that is, figure out what that is. Great, do that. So we have X plus one, or you know what? I'm gonna write it all out for you. So we have plug in that negative one, then put the absolute value, and we have a minus four afterwards. So I'm gonna say, hey, that's my A value. I'll come back to you later. So we have, Minus a negative one gives us that plus one that I just mentioned. So we're going to write that plus one now inside the absolute value. Put our minus four for our k value. And then I'm going to go over here. Oh, it's not rocks. So I know it's not going to be negative. And I'm going to go to my next point, which is here and here. So it looks like our y values changed by one, two, three and our x values changed by one. So that would be three over one, but we know that we can simplify three over one, change in y over change of x, three over one just equals three. We're gonna write the absolute value of x plus one, and then our minus four. So that is our final answer on D. Okay, again, if that was too quick, go back and rewatch any of those that you would like. We're gonna turn it over. Okay. Look in here. It says in our directions, you can identify the equation from a verbal description. Write the equation of an absolute value function to match each description using the form y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Then graph the absolute value. So again, we shifted right five and we went up four. So we have no a value change. So that means we're just gonna have an A value of one, so I don't have to write anything. Absolute value of X, and we went to the right, which would be positive. So that's, when we substitute that in, we have our X minus, we're gonna put that positive five. Finish the absolute value, and we went up four. So we're gonna write plus four. Okay, then we actually have to graph it. We're gonna to go to the right, one, two, three, four, five, and up, one, two, three, four. And this one's gonna be interesting. So since our A value, we don't have vertical stretch or vertical compression, we went up one and over one in both directions. You have yourself a nice little V opening upwards in the top right of your graph. Okay, next one, we have a vertical compression, vertical compression of two thirds and a vertex at negative one, positive eight. Um, so we're gonna have to do something here. We're gonna have to go by two, four, six, eight by 10. So I'm gonna put a little 10 over here as a reminder, 10 here, put a negative 10 there and a negative 10 there just so I know what I'm dealing with here. So I'm gonna go to negative one, it'll be right here. I'm gonna go up eight, so two, four, six, eight. And I'm gonna put my vertex there, okay? And 
that's just going to help me. So I'm going to have y equals, I know that my a value is two thirds because it says I have a vertical compression of two thirds. I have my x minus, it's a negative one. So when you subtract a negative, that becomes positive. And my y value of my vertex is at plus eight. Okay, now I have to graph it. So from here, I need to go up two. And remember, this is already going by two. So up two over one, two, three. Up two over one, two, three. You should be using a straight edge. I think I left my straight edge in another room. Oh, you know what? Got this lovely box of gum. So well, that's gonna help me out. There you go. Straight edges. Oh man, that was terrible. Should have done a better job of that. Try it again. It's five gum box. Help me out. There we go. Straight edge. Boom. Took care of it all. Next one, we have a rocks, left four, and up two. So doesn't say they have a compression or a stretch. So I'm just going to write y equals negative absolute value x minus, but I went left. So I know that left is negative. I should probably graph that. One, two, three, four, and up two, one, two. Okay, so if that's negative four, that means a negative negative makes that a positive four. And then up two, I'm gonna put a plus two there. Notice how I'm kind of talking this all out. Might be a good strategy for you to talk it out in your head as well. Or out loud, whisper it to yourself, that's fine too. So we have a negative A value. So we're gonna go down one over one, down one, over one. Our change in y over our change of x. Then we're going to bring back our gum box and help us out with that straight edge. So we have downward facing b. Looks like this. All right. Next one up. And I suggest to you if you're cruising on this, do D, E, and F on your own. Then go to when I'm done with them all, check your answers. All right, so we have a rocks on this one. So I know it's negative. We have a vertical stretch of five halves. Remember, anything over one is going to be a stretch, even if it's a fraction. That fraction is greater than one. Okay, we have absolute value. We went to the right, so that's positive. Oh, I'm running into nine, so I got to do this again. 10, positive 10, that's negative 10, that's negative 10. Each one of these is going to be worth two. So two, four, six, eight, nine, and down two, four, five. So that's where I need to be. So I went to the right, which means that's positive. So my x minus, oops, I put x minus five. X minus nine stays. And then I went down five, so that's minus five. All right, now I have to account for my negative five and two. Yikes, okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. And then I go one, two in both directions. So one, two, three, four, five. And I go one, and I'm already at, I'm off of that little graph, but that's okay. Again, use my gum box, help me out. Connecting my points, have a downward facing V because I have a rocks, good. All right, next one, vertical stretch of three, that's positive three, that's gonna go there. I have a vertex at eight, that's positive. So my X minus, leave that eight there. And at negative six, so I write minus six. Oh, I run into it again. I'm gonna have to do two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So that's gonna be a 10, a 10, negative 10, negative 10. Okay, I'm gonna go graph my vertex first. I'm gonna go two, 
positive eight, two, four, six, eight, and down six, two, four, six. Okay, I have a vertical stretch of three. Um, and remember, it's change in y over change of x. So three as a fraction is three over one. So I'm going to go up three, one, two, three, and over one. I'm going to do that again just so I have another point. One, two, three, and over one. Okay, again, one, two, three, over one. One, two, three, over one. Notice that my points are mirroring each other. We've talked many times how our y values are mirrors of each other. Make sure that that is true. That's how you're going to create that V that we're looking for. Okay, upward facing, good. That looks like a stretch. Oh my gosh, don't do that. All right, sorry if you get interrupted on that. My computer just tried to do something. All right, next one, I just have a rocks. So nothing else has changed from the parent graph. So negative absolute value of X. Start at the origin, make it go down one and over one in both directions. It's just that parent function that has been reflected over the X axis. Got that rocks action going on. All right, there we go. Okay, now we're going to come down here and do some matching. Give it a try on your own. Pause the video if you want. Try it out. All right, here we go. I'm going to do the answer key for you. Vertically stretched and shifted to the left. All right, so I need a vertical stretch. That means I have to have a, a value that is greater than one. So it's not that one. Um, it could be this one, but it went to the left. No, that means it went to the right because that um, I would just be subtracting a positive. Okay, nope, can't be that one. Hmm. I don't know about this one. I don't like any of those. Okay, let's try B. Okay, so here we have a rocks that is vertically stretched and shifted up. Okay, so we have a rocks. That's the only one that's kind of your dead giveaway. Is it vertically stretched? Yep, and shifted up. Good, so B is I, V. I'm good with that. Cross that one off. C, vertical compression, shift right and down. Hmm. Thinking that we have a little bit of a mistake here. That's a bummer. So what I'm going to do, cross that one out. And I'm going to say that that's a shift left. And I'm going to cross this one out, or vertically stretched. This one was to the right. So that needs to be to the right. So I apologize if I led you astray and said, start it on your own. Run into an issue. So let's go back to this one. Vertical compression shifted to the left and down. We went to the left and we went down. So I'm liking C as I. Now I want to go back up to A, vertically stretched, shifted to the right. I'm liking that as I, I, Roman numeral two. And let's check this one, vertical compression. Yep, that A value is less than one, but greater than zero. Shifted down seven, I'm liking that for Roman numeral three. All right, sorry about that mess up here. Um, I'll have to fix that for future years. Okay, hopefully this was super helpful to you guys. Um, hopefully you're having a great day. Um, good luck on the rest of the worksheet that you need to do, uh, your homework, whatever you don't finish is homework. And that's it. Thank you, have a great day.